Danny Kelly has brought three really great players so far. Dalton Kincaid, Kincaid Devin A. Shane, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. Who is fourth, Danny? All right. So this guy's just stylistically I love. Um, and I think if he, again, if he lands in the right spot, could be way, way better than people are expecting. That's Roshan Johnson running back out of Texas. Just, you know, obviously stuck behind uh, B. John Robinson for most of his career. He he actually was he was recruited as a quarterback, came in, switched immediately to running back because they had a need at running back. And then he led the team, I believe, that year in rushing. Um, and so obviously, you know, versatile, coachable, that like showing, you know, sacrifice and switching position and, and running with it, uh, pun intended. And then, you know, obviously sticking with the team, even though they re- they recruited like the best <laughs> like running back recruit ever or whatever last 10 years. Um, and, you know, obviously he was a backup there, um, but I think he's the type of running back that does a little bit of everything really well. Um, pass pro catching passes, breaking tons of tackles, making the most of his carries uh, tone setter, special teams, like all the, all the cliches that like coaches love, I think actually does matter a little bit because I think he's going to see the field because of those things. Um and I don't know if he's ever going to be like a, a super explosive guy who runs away from people and, and creates big plays, but I've comped him to two guys that really come to mind for him, for me with him is, is Chris Carson, the Seahawks former running back. Oh, yeah. And then, um, and in fact, like Chris Carson, if you look at their final year college numbers, they're almost like identical because Chris Carson was backing up justice Hill at Oklahoma state. Um, Man. And then Zoomers will not remember. Yeah. Remember those days. That's yeah. justice Hill is like a reason I'm like worried about, Devin and Jane a little bit like <laughs> no no it's gonna justice hill it's gonna mm-hmm. finally happen in 2020 he's still in the league i think yeah, he's been um, hanging around he's still in the ravens yeah so um but yes like the so for him he's he's a big sort of upright runner but he's physical he breaks a lot of tackles uh the other guy he reminds me of is brian robinson i think like similar profiles um you know just grinders that coaches are going to want to play because they trust them you mentioned cliches, Danny. The, the cliche, the, the the rare guy recruited to Texas as a quarterback who they wanted to change positions who like actually did it. Like uh, we all remember the the meme of Mac Brown recording like re- recruiting like one generational athlete after another as like they were a quarterback and like we want you to play corner. Uh, someone actually was recruited and changed positions for Texas, and uh, he's the next Miles Sanders, stuck behind a generational exactly. talent. And yeah. Yeah, you're not the first guy who's come on the pod and praised Rashawn Johnson. He's gonna be another guy, depending on where he goes. But like his dynasty draft capital could like maybe like shock some people because they look at his college numbers, maybe don't know a ton about him. Like this guy was a backup. Like mm-hmm. I know Bijan, but it seems like someone who could end up going really, really. Where, where have you seen him going in dynasty drafts, Danny? Do you know off the top of your head? Um, anywhere honestly from like the late second. And this is super. I do super flex mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super flex tight end premium. So you get like these guys get pushed back a little bit because there's tight ends going and, and quarterbacks going. But um, I, th- I believe just off the top of my head, like anywhere from late second into the middle part of the third round. Um, if you get him in the late third, like that to me is like a huge value. Um, but early to mid third, I'd say it's probably around average. I don't know the ADP in front of me, but yeah. And that makes sense to me too. Like if it's a super flex and tight end premium that he is probably gonna be going like mid second and like more standard ones. And yeah. people like might be kind of uncomfortable with that, but yeah, you have to really, contextual i mean for being behind Bijan too these are pretty great numbers like, right for yeah, being... he was like super efficient like he was a good tackle breaker in college and i think what you said about him uh like he's coaches are probably going to like him. i don't know for sure but like he's he did play special teams and will play special teams in the nfl he's a good pass blocker connor yeah. rogers came on and comped him to jamal williams because williams it's we haven't seen recently one. but yeah he's a really he actually is a good pass catcher he didn't do that at all in detroit but in, in green bay he was a really good pass catcher and PFF ranks him every year as one of the best pass blockers. And that's like what Roshan projects to do. Like, I don't know if he's going to be the most special back, but like I see him having a role in the league for a long time. And even as a rookie, because like you said, like it reminds me of the opposite of when Damian Harris came in. Like Damian Harris is a good runner. Right. He was healthy scratch for almost every game of his rookie year because he doesn't do anything other than run. Whereas Roshan is the opposite. Like, I don't know if he'll ever be like a, as interesting of a runner as Damian Harris guy pretty good if his knees aren't shot uh but he will immediately find a role doing something and that's probably pretty valuable especially for a guy like he's not going to go at the top of the second round right i I think he's a really good prospect but he's going to have to earn his playing time in uh, in a committee and maybe on special teams he has clearly shown that ability in college he had to yeah i think And and with these this year's running back class in particular like there's about 12 guys that could go at that 
third round, fourth round range, I think. Like, it's hard to project some of these guys. Some of them might fall a little bit later. But if you're doing dynasty drafts before the draft, I think Roshan is one of the safer guys, quote unquote, safer running backs in this, like, you know, sort of tier of running backs to take just because I do think he's going to earn those those reps early on because they're the coaches will be able to like trust him to do some of that stuff that you don't really expect like Zach Evans to do or whatever. You know what I mean? Like he's, I I feel like he has a higher floor year one and he'll retain his value a little bit quicker uh, or he'll like pay off on his value a little, a little quicker and you can maybe trade him if you don't like what's happening. But, um, but yeah. Uh, 95th percentile elusive rating for Roshan Johnson. So the guy broke some tackles in college. And I, I think that translates pretty well, usually to, to the NFL. He averaged 4.28 yards after contact uh, per attempt, which was wow. actually more than Bijan. <laughs> there you go. Bijan's a so it's better than Bijan is what I'm saying. Yeah. I heard it here first. Yeah. Danny, real quick, you comped him to Chris Carson. Does that mean he like runs like a crash test dummy? Like hopefully like he's not like, <laughs> of, seeking yeah. out contact <laughs> and like, uh, like, man, Chris Carson was so fun to watch. Play, oh yeah. Man. Yeah. Uh, um, I think so. Contact. Like, He'll he'll try to run guys over. He'll jump over guys. That kind of reminded me of, of Chris Carson too. Just like uh, and the fact that they're both taller, big physical guys, um, without a, a, like an extra gear to run away from people. Like Chris Carson yeah. in his throughout his career, like I think had probably like two twenty yard plus runs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's just yeah. like not creating big plays. Um, but he's just so good everywhere else. That doesn't matter. Yep. If you yeah, for the listener, it. Roshan six foot two twenty. He's legit big. Yeah. Like, looks he, he can play all three downs. Obviously, he didn't get to do it in college. Uh, he has a reasonable excuse. I think he's a hard guy for the for the spreadsheet nerds, myself included, to handle. Because like mm-hmm. guys who are less, he, he's not even committee back. He was just a backup in college, just almost never pan out. But like, if you make an exception to to the rule, this is what it looks like. Obviously, like you can be a little more right. dig a little deeper and be like, yeah, of course they played Bijan over him. But when he was on the field, as Denny pointed out with his elite elusiveness, like he made every every snap, every touch count. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and RotoWorld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way. Thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay? Respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Roto World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.